There's been some absolutely massive revelations for the Battlefield franchise over the last couple of days. Huge implications for the future with massive shifts in the teams working on the games, the people in charge of the franchise, and generally the structure of how things will work moving forwards. We covered all of that in a video the other day. You can catch it linked above in the top right. But today, what I want to talk about is Battlefield 2042. You know, the game that's actually out right now. And some big changes that are going to be happening to this game very soon that I think could have a very profound effect on how it plays, how it performs, and whether it signals dice was perhaps wrong to go in the general direction that they did. And today we're sponsored by Rockat. They've sent me a lovely peripheral pack here, their Cone Pro Air Mouse, Vulcan TKL Pro Keyboard, and Sense Icon Mouse Pad, all super high quality products, and perfect if you absolutely love RGB lighting. The Cone Pro Air features stellar wireless and Bluetooth technology with rapid charge to keep you wire free whilst gaming, and it's got that iconic ergonomic shape that fits right into your palm, plus it's Nvidia Reflex certified too, so you know you're getting the lowest latencies possible. The Vulcan TKL Pro keyboard doubles as an RGB lamp, and it features Rockat's new Titan Switch optical mechanical keystroke. It uses the speed of light to detect a key press, which basically gives you zero delay when hitting an input. And with being a 10 keyless, it takes up less space on your desk as well. This is a really nice keyboard. And finally, the Sense Icon Pad just gives you plenty of room and it features a non-slip rubber backing so there's no movement on your desk. Hit the link at the top of the description right now and grab yourselves an early Christmas present. Right then, down to business. Alongside this huge article that detailed the future of the franchise, we got a separate, smaller announcement about what we can expect in the near future of Battlefield 2042. Despite that big announcement, development on 2042 and the live service that DICE and Ripple Effect has been working on, that's going to continue largely unchanged in the near future. And then further into the future, that's when the structure of those bigger changes will come in and 2042 will get even more support from more teams that are being created. So 2042 is definitely sticking around for the long term. The first big part of the article was DICE's intention to bring the 64 player variants of Conquest and Breakthrough, currently only accessible to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, to next gen consoles and PC for a limited time. Now this change will be happening in December, likely for the holiday break and will probably launch alongside the new weekly missions that will form part of that pre-season activity before Season 1 kicks off in early 2022. Now, as much as this is part of a smaller article, I actually think this is a huge move for 2042. First of all, because of the timing of the edition, and secondly, that DICE has even considered this edition at all. So when it comes to timing, just a couple of weeks after the launch of the game and closing in really fast on that holiday break, a change like this says to me that DICE is looking to find ways to solve some currently very obvious problems with 2042 and to solve them at least temporarily very quickly. The first one is poor performance in the 128 player modes of Conquest and Breakthrough and then the poor balance that is currently in play between ground vehicles, air vehicles and infantry. With 64 players that balance won't be as bad as 128 where things just really go beyond even organized chaos. Battlefield should always be organized chaos. I think 128 is ridiculously unorganized. With regards to poor performance in 2042, that's something that I think has been affecting almost every single version of the game, whether that's last gen consoles, next gen consoles, or PC. I think on the next gen consoles, because the game is targeted to run at 60 FPS and 4K resolution, and I, I do believe that DICE looked at those consoles and went, we're going to make this game directly for those consoles, because that's going to be where most of our audience is. I think there's probably less problems there, but I know on the Xbox Series X and S that there was like some issues where consoles were forced shutting down and there's been some pretty drastic frame drops down into like the 20s and the 10s, which is just completely unplayable. But performance on the PC platform where high frame rates has almost become an expectation of Battlefield games over the last decade, it has been really, really poor there. I'm not going to harp on about this, but I've got a killer rig and I'm trying to play this game at 1440p on low settings and I'm struggling to get past 70, 80 FPS in most areas. And when things get hectic in breakthrough, lots of players in one area, I'm dropping down into like the 50s and the 40 FPSs. It's better now than what it was at launch and now that they fixed the hit reg and the bloom with the guns, 
I can still hit my targets at low FPS, so in terms of that kind of performance, at least I can hit my shots, but I'm still noticing some pretty drastic frame drops. And it seems that just in general, 2042 is absolutely hammering the CPU a lot harder than it used to for 64 players. That jump up to 128 seems to be the main driver in poor performance in this game. So to me, the announcement that over the holidays, DICE is going to be bringing that 64 player version of Conquest and Breakthrough to the next gen consoles and PC, at least when it comes to performance, I think that's a reaction to the general negativity that the game runs so poorly in those 128 player modes. And so DICE is just flipping the switch. They're taking things back down to the 64 player experience over the holidays so that players can play 2042 without suffering from massive frame drops and stuttering and generally low FPS in those more chaotic moments. Apparently sales figures for 2042 were around 4.2 million for the first week and I think that makes it the second biggest Battlefield launch ever, only missing the top spot to Battlefield 3 which I think pulled in 4.6 million sales in its first week. So if you've got that many people buying the game at launch, perhaps EA and DICE is anticipating more people starting to play the game over the holiday period, more people getting the game at Christmas either as a present or buying it for themselves and they don't want all of those players suffering the same performance issues that players did at the general launch of the game. But then there's also the consideration that 128 players was actually one of the key selling points of 2042. The next generation jump forwards, we're going to double the player count, double the map size, we're going bigger than ever. It's clear that the performance issues that we saw in the technical playtest in the summer and then the beta for 2042, that performance was a constant issue throughout that part of the game. So it's unlikely DICE didn't anticipate generally worse performance from this game compared to their last few games they've launched. So the question I do think needs to be asked is, was 128 players actually worth it? And I'm going to go deeper into that into another video very soon, so watch out for it. But at least for now, you know that 64 player experiences are coming to 2042 on the next gen and PC versions of the game over the holidays. I'm unsure if that means it's going to completely replace the 128 player modes. We'll have to wait and see. I wouldn't be opposed to those disappearing for a few weeks and we can all play 64 players again. I'm not so sure 128 players was such a great idea. Then we should probably discuss these holiday cosmetic items that everybody was discussing the other day on social media. There were a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions, but DICE has now released a statement on their presence in the game. According to the team that runs the Direct Communication Twitter account, the cosmetics themselves were not all planned to be used at this stages of the game's life cycle, and that as a part of the live service for 2042, the teams are working months ahead to build out content ready to be dropped at a specific time in the future. That's their explanation anyway. Also, apparently certain cosmetics are being developed for single time use in special portal modes to add some sparkle. During the live service, we might actually see more of these mode locked cosmetics, which then won't impact the gameplay in the rest of the game. They'll only exist in certain experiences within portal. However, the weekly missions starting very soon that are going to be part of that pre-season activity they will include a couple of these cosmetics and it namely appears to be the weapon skins and the ones that are shown in the tweet are for the 870 shotgun and the pp29 smg now we had so much debate and controversy over the cosmetics available in the previous battlefield title battlefield 5 i genuinely don't have the energy to start that debate and talk about it for years on end again for 2042 but yes, what I will say is I can understand why some people said that the Boris Santa outfit didn't fit the tone of 2042. But I can also understand people not caring about that at all and just taking them for what they are. Fun, festive outfits in a video game. I can see both sides of the argument and that's really where I stand. I don't really care one way or the other. Put them in the game, I'll use them. Don't put them in the game, well, I never knew they were there, so it doesn't matter to me. Nice wrapped it up by basically telling us that we were all reacting to these cosmetics without the context for their use. They then gave us their intended use, which is limited time portal events that will come and go over time, and then clarified that most of the skins we saw were not in the plans to be used this year anyway. So that's fine for me. Storm in a teacup. Over. And then lastly for today, a quick mention of what's to come in Season 1 or early 2022 for Battlefield 2042. I stated in the article that a new map would be launching for the game called Exposure. Absolutely no details whatsoever here, 
apart from, and I quote, it takes map design to a whole new level. Now, if you want to read between the lines there, the word level could suggest verticality. Lots of levels or layers to the map, something that we've not really seen Battlefield do before, but if you are reading that line in between, then that might be too large an assumption to make from just one word. It is good to know, though, that we will be getting a new map very soon in early 2022. Alongside that, a new specialist will launch as well. We know we're getting four of those in the first year of support through the live service. And because we know there are four seasons, I'm going to assume that we will get one specialist per season. No doubt as well, we will see advancements to the 2042 story and narrative, which was a big focus for DICE before the launch. We had that Exodus short film and then the podcast that was describing a situation brewing on the German-Polish border. And you can also expect DICE to keep delivering patches for the game. Another one is scheduled to arrive before Christmas. It's a smaller update focused on balancing certain elements of the game. And EA has said that the DICE team will be working to bring back, quote, fan favorite systems, unquote, and that are still missing from the game, such as scoreboard and in-game chat. So big gameplay changes coming to 2042 in the form of that 64 player experience coming back for the holidays. That's one of the fastest semi backtracks I've seen from DICE since the TTK debacles of Battlefield 5. And please, God, let's not do that all over again. Thanks very much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.